we're here at uh, Eurogamer at the Arkham City booth. We're here with uh, Sarah, uh, who's um, going to talk to us a little bit about the game. How are you doing today? I'm awesome. Really excited to be here at Eurogamer. Um, so the first thing I want to ask is, we both loved the last game. Where has the story gone? What sort of happened in the city of Gotham at the minute? Well, we've covered a lot of this off in these digital prequel comics we've done, but if you haven't checked them out, the story is, at the end of Arkham Asylum, you saw Gordon Sharp has gone off, he kind of was unconscious the whole way through it. Batman did all the saving, but it turns out Quincy Sharp has taken all the glory. So now he's Mayor Quincy Sharp, and he has basically closed off part of Gotham. And now all the inmates from Black, Rock, Black Gate Prison and from Arkham Asylum have been shipped in here, and that includes some of the most dangerous and devious guys. You've got Riddler, you've got Penguin, you've got Two-Face in there and Hugo Strange is presiding over the whole thing and we all know he knows who Batman really is that sets up an awesome psychological kind of mindset and obviously the first part of the demo involves Catwoman yeah how does she fit into the whole grand scheme because Catwoman's always been a bit of a funny character not quite a good guy not quite a bad guy where does she yeah. fit in well the relationship between Batman and Catwoman like you said is obviously very complicated and in Arkham City we want her to feel like a completely different character so you've played as her she's sexy She's naughty, she's quicker. But she's there in Arkham City for a very different reason. She's a thief at the end of the day. So when their paths do cross, which we're not getting any more information about, you're going to have a really interesting dynamic between the two. And of course, we pay homage to that kind of relationship they have. Obviously, the main thing about Batman, he is just a human at the end of the day. Yeah. It's all about his gadgets. So we oh, all yeah. love the gadgets at the end of that one. I've heard that he has the same gadgets he had in the last game straight away. Are there any new gadgets on the horizon there? Yeah, so you start Arkham City with all the core gadgets you had at the end of Arkham Asylum, but they've all kind of been wellied up to like more awesome 2.0 standards. Yeah. But you're going to have a lot of new gadgets to play with. My favourite especially is the smoke pellet. So you can drop this down, disappear off into the rafters and pick thugs off one by one. You've got a wreck gun, which is like a remote electrical charge. You can fire at thugs or have any kind of metal guns and use it in like puzzle sections we have. Freeze grenades. Ah, oh, so much. Yes, I love the smoke grenade. That's going to be yeah. that's classic Batman. Now. It definitely <laughs> feels like a very vintage Dark Knight thing to do. So drop it and all the thugs are going to be like, oh, what's going on? We don't understand. So that's really cool. The main thing about the last game was Batman and Joker's relationship. Yeah. Any hints on what the Joker's up to in this? So at the end of Arkham Asylum, you got to do that awesome uppercut with your explosive gel. But you know he ingested a hell of a lot of titan at the end of that. So Arkham City picks up where he's recovering. He's very, very sick. And anybody else would think, oh, we can, we can leave him be. But anybody knows Joker, knows that a Joker backed in a corner is the most dangerous he can be. Absolutely. You mentioned other villains in the game, so like the Riddler, you see Mr. Freeze on the poster over there. Yeah. Do they fit in? Are they essentially bosses? Are they going to be play, uh, playing in the storyline quite a bit or slightly? So you're going to have encounters with all these characters as you go through. People like Freeze are great because it's not black and white. It's not your typical Batman villain relationship. He's there for his wife, Nora. So Batman's only going to get involved in this. He has, absolutely has to because he sympathises with him. Whereas people like Joker, it's very, it's very black and white. Like, you and me, we're enemies. This is going down. Absolutely. People like Riddler are there. We've, we've announced he's a physical presence in the game. So in the first one, he was like, and just kind of constantly berating you. Yeah. So we promise everyone here today <laughs> that you can put your hands around the... and give that green guy that squeeze you Fantastic. wanted to do for the first game. Uh, aspect of what made the game so fun last time was the variance in it. Yeah. It wasn't all action, it wasn't all stealth, and the yeah. scarecrow levels added a lot to it. Is there more of that, essentially more variance in what you actually do as Batman in Arkham City? Yeah, so the, the ideal for us is people come away from Arkham City and go, yeah, I feel like Batman. Mm. But we want people to understand why they feel like Batman. So we really explore his relationship with Superman, you've got cats like Catman and Tardy Al Ghul, his relationship with like Hugo Strange and his real identity. So the variety you have is that each villain there has got a completely different reason to be there. So your interaction with them is completely unique. No one guy has the same reason to be there. Two faces there because he wants to get power and he thinks killing Catwoman will give him that power. 
Harrison. Penguin's there because he just wants control. He's been there since the beginning. He is just not budging. Yeah, absolutely. And Riddler's there because he's finally going to force Batman to play his own game. So you've got a lot to juggle, a lot of villains, but that gives us a chance to really explore characters and your relationship with them. One final question. Any chance of getting the game early? Oh, yeah, right. It's like the, the Batman's <laughs> cape. Here you go. <laughs> cool. Well, that's all for now. Uh, big thank you to Sarah for uh, speaking to us. No and uh, we'll see you all next time. Ha <laughs> ha!